Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Java Stream API. First, I'm going to give a quick introduction to what streams are, why the API was added, and what they're essentially useful for. Then I'm going to, we're going to run some experiments uh, and look at the performance differences between streams and for loops, and as well as parallel streams and like manual uh, implementation of concurrency. And then finally, I'm going to give you my opinion on when, if at all, you should use Java Streams in your code. So first up, what are Java streams? When you use Java streams, you're essentially coming up with a declarative method of operating over a collection of data. So streams are composed into stream pipelines. Uh, and these pipelines will start with a source. So that could be like an array, a generator function, or some other collection, or like an IO channel. And then some number of intermediate operations. These intermediate operations will produce more streams from your stream. So let's say you have you know, a stream from some collection, your intermediate operations would be things like maps or filters or boxing in the case of primitives, and they'll produce another stream. And finally, you have your terminal operations. Now, the terminal operations are the ones that will convert your stream into something else, either like an aggregate over the data in your stream um, or maybe conversion into some other collection. Um, but regardless, whatever your terminal operation is, as long as you don't activate your terminal operation yet, the stream will remain as a stream. Uh, and that is to say that it's lazily evaluated. So you can construct your stream, pass it around your code, and then only have it be evaluated once you've applied that terminal operation to it. So how do these differ from just using collections? Well, while collections are primarily concerned with you know, managing their data and managing how the user can access the data that they store, uh, streams actually don't provide you really any direct access to the data that they store nor like any way to manipulate them directly but streams allow you to declaratively describe what kind of operations you want to take over the data in that stream and how you how and if you want to aggregate it now streams come in two types you have your sequential stream and your parallel stream parallel stream should typically utilize concurrent or parallel if you have the processing power execution of the operations that you describe in the pipeline so I'm gonna give a quick example of the syntax of streams here. So let's say we have a list of integers and let's say that we wanted to filter out all the integers that are less than 10. So we can add a filter intermediate operation and we can set the requirement that i has to be greater or equal to 10. Uh, then let's say that we want to convert all these integers into strings. Well, then we can map all of those integers to a string. Finally, let's say we wanted to collect these back into a list of strings. Well, we can do that with a collector. One of the collectors that's provided by the stream API is just the to list collectors, which is just collectors dot to list. So this leads me into my next point. So why were streams added to Java 8? And the reason for that is not actually related to performance. While streams can sometimes give you a performance increase, typically that's not the reason that you're using streams or why they were added to Java. Streams were added to provide easy access to parallelism or concurrency for Java developers. Since most applications or like components of applications can be broken down into filters, maps, reductions, and collections, or collectors, the Parallel Stream API provides a way to give you parallelism without having to worry about the details of the multi-threading. You can think of it as providing multi-threading or, or concurrent programming as a service, right? Multi-threading as a service is basically what these parallel streams are. And they make it much easier on the development side so you don't have to sink so many hours into debugging and worrying about race conditions. They'll handle the parallelism for you at the cost of you lose a little bit more agency. You lose a little bit of agency in terms of how exactly you can optimize. If you're really trying to optimize your parallel code, well, you probably wouldn't want to use the Java Streams API for that. But if you just wanted to get some parallelism uh, quickly without having to sink too much development time into it, well then the Java Streams API provides that for you very easily, right? Now when you, when you think about Java in general, although I think Java actually has pretty good performance, the goal of most Java paradigms is not specifically performance-based or only performance-based or only readability-based. A lot of it is convenience and how can we allow developers to write as much code as possible, as quickly as possible, and as easy as, easily as possible, and how can we allow that code to be shared among other developers very easily. And Streams API helps with those goals. And speaking of sharing code, the other thing that the Streams API really improves is readability. Let's take a look at this example here. Compared to how I would have to write this as a for loop, 
it's very obvious what's going on here because it's so declarative. So now let's get into the fun part of this video. We're going to be running some experiments and I can guarantee that the results will surprise you. So let's start with a simple example. Let's say we have uh, a list of numbers and we want to sum all the values of the numbers in that list. So let's start with our baseline. We're just going to use a regular loop. So first we'll create a aggregate. So then we'll loop over all the elements in our list and we're not going to use a for each loop here. We'll have a separate uh, test for the for each loop. And we'll add to our sum every element in our list and return our sum. This should give us a baseline as to how like a for loop would perform this, uh, this operation. Next, let's take a look at the for each loop. So we can basically do the same thing here, but instead we'll try to use a for each loop, which might provide some performance boost. I'm just curious, you know, do for each loops somehow optimize for these kind of things over uh, for loops? Next, let's implement the sequential stream version of this. So we'll basically just reduce this stream into a sum of longs. Okay. Go. Next, we can implement a version where the stream is already pre-built. So let's say we're given a stream set of a list just to see if that like makes any performance difference. We'll again reduce this in the same way. Now this is going to be interesting and it should show you just how convenient parallel streams are. Uh, compared to trying to write concurrency yourself. So this is a pretty simple task. I want to add some concurrency to this sum, see if it increases my results or, or increases my performance a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a program that allows me to partition the list some number of ways and concurrently sum all the values in those partitions and then sum them all back up together. The first thing we'll do is have some aggregate. We're going to use an atomic long. The reason for that is so that when our threads are accessing the sum variable, they don't we don't run into any race conditions. The atomic long will allow you uh, like synchronized access essentially to the underlying variable. Okay, so for each of our partitions, so from i to the number of partitions we have. Okay, now we wanna sum over each partition. And for the sake of making this simple, let's just assume that the length of the list is divisible, like evenly divisible by the number of partitions we have. Um, so we'll start by grabbing the partition number where we're at, so k equals i. We'll spawn a new thread here, and that thread will then create a partial sum. So we're going to loop from the first part of our partition. So we want k times the partition size. Our partition size is going to be the length of, divided by the number of partitions. We want to loop until the beginning of our next partition. So that's j is less than uh, our next partition here, times obviously the length sizes of our partitions. And every iteration of this sum, of course, we're going to add to our partial sum. Let's do an direct access to the list to keep things fair here. Then we want to add to our total sum, uh, the completion of our partial sum. Then we want to start this thread, and we'll return the sum at the end of this function. What the, There's a, currently a problem with this, and that's that if we run this as is, we're going to get our sum from our atomic integer before like the threads have finished accumulating. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to keep track of the list of all of these threads here. We'll add all of our threads to this thread list. And then we'll join on each thread uh, in this thread list. So to review, we're basically just partitioning this uh, list we've gone into some number of sublists. We're going to sum over all the sublists in separate threads, start all of those threads, wait for all of them to finish, and then return the value of our atomic long. Now let's compare this to the parallel stream implementation of the same, basically the same thing. Um, well, let's convert this to a parallel stream. And we're just going to reduce this like so. Same as the others. Look at that. Compared to the development time it took to write the previous block of code and all the code associated with this, you cannot tell what this is doing by looking at it. I mean, it just looks absolutely crazy. But this, you know exactly what it's doing for similar effect. It's just summing all the values in our list. This should be like an extremely telling example of the value that these parallel streams or the streams provide in terms of just the readability it adds to your code and the access it gives you to concurrency. Now, just for the sake of it, let's take a look at what it looks like if the parallel stream was pre-built. We're just assuming this is a parallel stream here. Now we have all of our test candidates um, and let's write a quick utility function to actually time them. So here I've written a time method that will essentially take uh, any of those as lambda expressions as a function. It'll run the function, taking the time before and after. 
in nanoseconds, compute the duration, and then log the results in terms of nanoseconds. Now we just have to add these calls to time method for each of the test cases that we want. So for example, we'll run the baseline here and we'll use that range that I created. So this will time like how long the baseline took to sum over the values in the range and also obviously print out the result. Cool, so I decided to try running the manual concurrency version with both five partitions and 10 partitions just to see like what the performance results might be for that. One more thing I'm gonna to wanna to add here is I'm gonna want to log the like name of the function that's being run. So here we go, we'll add this line above all of these functions in order to get the function name. Now we can finally run this test and see the results. So we want to take a look at these results. We see that the best performer was actually the manual concurrency with 10 partitions. Um, so our efforts were rewarded in the end for all the complex code we had to write for this. We ended up getting the best performer. Um, the next four were all roughly the same, that being the pre-built parallel stream, the manual concurrency with five partitions, and the two for loops, the regular for loop and the for each loop. The next best performer was the parallel stream uh, that was not pre-built, so obviously there's a lot of overhead here in actually constructing the parallel stream. And then the sequential streams performed the worst by far. So we, we did see some performance degradation with using the sequential streams compared to just using a base for loop. This isn't particularly surprising because you would imagine that Java's for loops are pretty well optimized for doing things like summing over the values of a list, and you'd expect that their performance would be much better. So given that that's the case, let's try this with some other task, maybe that takes some filters or some mapping and see if the results are still the same. So this time, let's write an algorithm that will take some list of dates, convert or some list of strings and convert them into local dates and also like filter them out based on some condition. We'll set our condition to be that like the date has to be not between 2012 and 2014, for example. Then we'll test one baseline for each loop and then its stream counterpart. Okay, so here's our baseline. Um, I'm just going to take that those like list of strings or of dates as strings and some list class. So I think I'm going to test like link list and array list and it will um, loop over all of the strings in the string date, parse them into local dates, check the conditions on them, and then add them to our list, either array list or link list or whatever we choose, and then return the list size just to make sure that it's working properly. And for our stream implementation, um, again, assuming that the string dates are given to us as a stream, we'll map over them and parse them to local date, and then we'll filter out any dates that do not satisfy our condition. And then to be fair, we'll collect this to a list and return the size. So now we'll run four experiments here, one with a array list, one with a link list, one with a sequential stream, and one with a parallel stream. So let's run this to see the results. Looks like our best performer was actually the parallel stream in this case by a large margin. And next best was the sequential stream. The linked list actually performed pretty close to our sequential stream. And then the array list uh, experienced the most performance degradation here. So as you can see by this example, it's not necessarily the case that the streams will uh, outperform for loops, but they definitely can. And in this case, we see that they actually did outperform, probably due to the nature of the task here. They require some mapping and some filtering. Um, these are what these maps, these streams, especially the parallel stream, is meant to optimize, really. So now we've seen two examples, one where the streams experienced some performance degradation to compare to just using for loops or manually implementing concurrency. And here we see that the streams actually offered quite a bit of performance increase. So that leads me into my final point. So when, if at all, should you use streams? And in my opinion, you should be using streams in the case where you're working on a project with a lot of people, you want your code to be readable, and you still want some sort of performance enhancement, and you're doing tasks that kind of fit this paradigm of mapping, filtering, reducing, and collecting. And if that's the case, using streams is an absolute must. Not only is it going to give you some performance boost as we saw here in, in a lot of cases, but it'll just vastly reduce the number of lines of code you have to write, making testing easier, making reading easier, and making development much easier for you and your team. So essentially, should you always be using streams? Well, not in every situation, but I would say in most situations that you're doing complex tasks, it's better to go with a stream rather than having to write it yourself procedurally using a for loop. So let me know down in the comment section, like, are you surprised by these results? I'll tell you, I'm actually pretty surprised. I always knew that streams weren't meant to offer you like a performance boost, but uh, I'm surprised that they actually 
can in a lot of cases, like we saw right here in this example. I'm definitely going to be using streams more often now in order to, you know, enhance my code maintainability, honestly. And uh, I definitely recommend you guys switch to streams. So, so I'll see you guys in the next video.